Welcome back to Python application programming. I am Mr. Rampur Srinath, uh, working as associate professor in the Department of Information Science, NIE Mysore. So today we will be covering uh, module 3, uh, we will start with module 3 which talks about uh, list, uh, dictionaries and tuples. So we will start with list today. So, we will be talking about uh, 3 things in module 3 uh, which talks about list, dictionaries and tuples. So initially we will be covering list. Now, when we come across a uh, word called list, uh, what, we, what do we understand? Uh, we think about okay, something like a group where we have members in the group, perfect. Right? So, we had covered something about similar to this in our uh, previous session, like something like a string. Okay, is it string a group of uh, something together? Definitely yes. Then each member of the group in terms of string, what are they? They are nothing but our characters. Right? So, when we discussed about strings, we told number of characters put together, they form a string. Uh, then we also discussed about the uh, characteristics of it, what are the operations that we can perform on that. But majorly all of that, when you look at the content, members of that particular group all are of same type. But lists are of not of that kind. Right? So a special kind is a list which is a collection, right? which is a collection. What are the uh, components or what are the elements of that group? What are the there are collections, right? What are each members of that collection, right? So when string, what do we get? It's again a collection, but every member of that group is a character. But when it comes to list, we do not have any restriction saying that okay, I have a group where all group members are only characters. I have a group where group members are only numbers. No, I have a group where I don't have any restriction. Is nothing but our list. Right. So, in that case, what is that? A, a collection of elements where each element is of different type. Right. So, when I put them as same type, then we may restrict. But here, we do not have any restriction as such. So, a, we need a facility where while, while something like while doing programming, we may have a data to be stored where it could be like a student uh, university seat number followed by a student name followed by rest of activities of it. So now, when you look at the content of each one of them, maybe they could be same or they could be a different data type, but I want to group them together. So the option that I have is what? List, right? So arrays cannot be uh, taken as a, uh, a solution for this because arrays have all types of same, where we need to have only characters all put together is nothing but our string. Right? So list, we do not have any restriction as such. So if you look at there are few uh, differences, yeah definitely we should have a difference identifying the, whether it is a list or not a list, right? or maybe it is a tuple or not a tuple or a dictionary or not a dictionary. right? Now how do I identify in python saying that okay, when I look at something it is a list, right? That, that happens or that we can do using a special symbol and that symbol is a square bracket. So when you look at this, what we have here, we have a variable called friends we have a variable called friends where what is the content of it? If you look at content, we have Joseph, Glenn, Sally and so on. So we have three members, we have three members, all three members put together is our one group name which is nothing but our friends. So in that case, when I put like this in this form, then what do I get? Yeah, definitely when there are three members inside the group, I should have a facility of accessing each member and we know that. How do I access each member? Yeah, when I have a group like this, then I am sure that anything of a particular group, we can access using the concept of index. So here, what is the index of this? Index is 0. What is the index of this? 1. Index of this is 2. So all our indexes will increase by 1 starting with 0. So if you look at second one, second also we have similar example where I have set of members, set of members put inside a group and I have a group name here like crayons. Right? I have a group name where I can access each member of the group by what? By an index with 0. Right? Now what is the advantage of having something of this kind? Either it could be a string or concept of array or list or dictionary or even uh, tuples. What is the one of the best advantage that we have in any programming language where we talk something like a grouping? Now if I want to store them separate. Then I have variable 1, variable 2, variable 3. So in that case, I need to store 3 variables. If I have hundreds of names like this, then 
we all know that for each one of them we need one variable but when i group them when i group them then how do i access it it's only the group name where in our example it is friends so now the advantage of having a group name is to access each one of them what should i remember a variable name for this a variable name for this a variable name for this but all this belong to one group and the group name is friends so in the case i can use friends and access each member of the group with small change is what indexing so how do i access uh, how do i access joseph yeah i have a friends as my group name and i know that index is zero then i'll say friends of zero it will give me the first value of it right so that is the advantage of having something like a grouping instead of having individual variables being stored all these values in individual variables we have all the values in one single variable but it's a group name so using friends can i access all of them definitely yes with what what is the distinction distinction is an index in the in our case so we understood like what when we have a variable what what we can have we can have only one value in the variable so based on our previous slide we have three values here so in this case i need three variables that's what the concept is so how did you overcome that using the concept of a group right so when you do not have a collection when you do not have a something called, uh, called as grouping then what we have supposed to do yeah each value one variable right that was earlier concept of which we had but now we need not worry about that we have a something called as a collection where i can have a set of elements put together giving a unique name for that okay so the we need some concept where we are able to identify that it's a list and we should inform the compiler or translator that it's a list right so for us to understand or tell the compiler that this is a list it's not a normal uh, set of variables what is that symbol that is used right the symbol that we use is a square bracket right so list constants what are the value that we have we are supposed to put inside the group all those values are embedded with a square bracket so if you look at we have 12476 in a square bracket which indicates what these are our members these are our members right and all these members belong to a group one one single entity so when i tell print it gives me like 124 and 76 it's a one value here it's a one value here now so how do i make sure that uh, this particular value what is being printed has uh, in our example three members right so if you look at the member here very important this is a number this is a number this is a number but we told that list can have there is no restriction on the members of the list data types now take another example red yellow blue again all these are strings this is a string this is a string this is a string so in our case in first example all are numbers second example are our strings but we told we'll take the advantage of the advantage what list is giving us that i am we are not putting any restriction on the members of the list right so when you look at this example you have red 24 98.6 so in that case you look at data type of red it happens to be a string next one is integer the third one is a float value so we are able to combine all of them together and tell that it's a list now another special facility that lists list has where we can embed a list on inside another list we can embed a list inside another list like example if you take it a list elements can be of python objects even a list what is that example that example is this so if you look at we have print where the first member is 1 where my second member of this is again a list so that we have a square bracket and elements of the list 5 comma 6 end of the list and then we have end of the list so now we have a inner list which is 5 and 6 and the outer list which we have this so where we have a list inside a list so list can also a, a member of a list can also be a, a member of a particular list so in our example 5 comma 6 is an inner list which is a member of another list where we have an element 1 inner list and a 7 right now when we when we are telling that we have two list one list embedded inside that when i print and for the end user it should also look similarly right so if you look at when we print this we get one then the inner list where we have two elements 5 comma 6 and 7 so now 
can we have a list where do not we do not have any element right so it's nothing but an empty list so how do i represent it's a list square bracket now how do i tell it's an empty empty element sorry how do i tell that list is an empty so we are indicating what we do not have any element so we will not have any in elements inside the list so we are looking at we are able to print it now so what what did we understand here right one list elements are enclosed between a square bracket one point number two I may have a members of a list. Each member of a list is distinct with the second member of a list in terms of not specifically a value. In terms of telling that this is my first occurrence, second occurrences. How do I differentiate it using comma? Third point, important point. We are talking about the content of the list. So where in our example, I have three members and three member data data types are different. right one of them is integer another one is float so all these have different things but when you take something like a string we don't have this advantage where we have different things put together right so an empty list is an element with zero occurrences with zero occurrences but it's a list so how do i identify that square bracket right now in our previous discussion when we were discussing about for loop looping structures did we come across something called as list yes we had come across but we never used the word as list right so recall in our previous session we wrote a for loop similar to this a for loop similar to this where we wrote for i in with the values like 5 4 3 2 1 colon print i and end of it print blast off right so now when you look at that how are we representing that we are enclosing all our numbers inside a square bracket here which is nothing but a list so we had encountered it but i did not figure out telling that this is a list right so now so how do i identify yeah square bracket now what is this for loop doing yeah we know that right so every time the value what is copied to i is our first element second element third element fourth element fifth element so in that case first time the value of i is 5 iteration is done next time i value is 4 iteration is done and so on after one i equal to 1 iteration is done after that we don't have any list any elements in the list so we come out of the for loop print this so what will be our output output will be 5 4 3 2 1 followed by this line 5 4 3 2 1 followed by the blast off line right? so we had encountered that concept of list but we did not figure out that it's a list right so we had come across that in our previous session now there is another example where in our previous example if you go through all were numbers but this example right wherein you have a strings here right so we have uh, what's the name of uh, the uh, list friends and we have three elements inside the list now same for loop instead of operating that on an integer we are doing it as on a string right so when you uh, same for loop for in friends so every time what happens this variable will have a value first second third what are we doing we are printing happy new year so now happy new year then we have a friend here and then finally done so now what will happen first time the value of friend is joseph so it will print happy new year and then what is the friend value it's joseph so similarly if you look at the output first time it will print happy new year and then the friend name which is our first value right first value then second time iteration will come in it will print happy happy new year the second member name print happy new year third time and then the third member name right then finally there are no more members inside the list for loop will terminate and will print done that is done so similar to our previous slide which we were talking about in integer but this happens to be a a collection of string collection of string now can we have a combination of that definitely you know there is nothing like we need to have only uh, numbers here or maybe only characters nothing as such because when we talk about a list each member may not be the same it can be of any type okay so here how do i access it right now the concept what we are trying to cover with list 
it is also applicable to something called as strings, but there are some changes, but how accessing a value what is stored in a string, the concept remains same even with the list also. So, most of the concept that is being dragged from the strings. Now, just like strings, we can get a single element, right. Now, how using the concept of a indexing with a square bracket, that is what we have done in the uh, concept of strings also. Now, when you take example of this, we have a list, same example we will try to cover up list where we have, how do I identify it is a list, yeah square bracket I have, then I have the members of the list and what is my list name, friends. So, what am I doing here, trying to access members, right. So, what we did in string, same concept is also applicable in list. Now, what we will have, the list name within the square bracket index, within the square bracket index. Now, what are we telling? Get the element which is at indexed 1, we all know that index starts from 0, so this is 0, this is 1 and this happens to be 2. So, now what are we accessing? We are accessing index 1, so this should be our answer. So, when you run this command, we get the answer like this, where index is 0, 1 and 2. If this was a string, if this was a string, right, so what, what, what it could be, right, this could be my first character, character with index 0, next, my next character with index 1, next character with index 3, this is for what, this is for string. Now, if it happens to be a list, then it is not a character, it is a element or a member, so this member can be an integer, this member can be a float value or this can, member can also be a string. Right, so the the concept remains same. Sorry, this is two. The concept remains same, but only change is what? Instead of having a single character, we identify that it's an element. So this is how we are able to access each element of a list. Each element of a list. Now, okay. One of the uh, uh, best characteristic what list has is mutable. So, in that case, I have a facility where we can do some changes, we can do some changes. Now, take example, strings, they are immutable, what do they mean? We cannot change the content of the string once we are done, right. So, now, if you have a string like ABC, now I want to change this content, but you cannot change the content of the string where you are trying to store that in a variable we are trying to store that in a variable, but what is required here? You can make a new string where the content can be changed, right, that is what. So, we cannot change the content of a string, we must make a new string to make a, any changes that we are supposed to do. Why? Because they are immutable, but what are list? Lists are mutable, where after I create a list, after I add a member for the list, then I have an option where I can change the member that is what mutable is, right. So, lists are mutable, we can change an element of the list after the, after the uh, list is created using the concept of indexing. So, we will take an example here. So, I have fruit equal to banana, fruit equal to banana. Now, look at, have we used a square bracket? No. So, in that case, this is not an example for a list. Right. So, uh, we have enclosed that in single quote. So, now it became a string. So, now what is the uh, value? Value is B A N A N A and what is the name that we are giving? Fruit. So, now I want to access my first element. Yeah, how do I access? Fruit of 0 done. This is my first element. Now, when I say print fruit of 0, what do I get? I get B. When I say print fruit of 0, what do I get? I get B. Now, what am I doing? I am trying to add a value or update my value or change my value at index 0. So, at index 0 I have b, what am I doing? Eliminating this, updating with small b, that is what I am doing at, at this case. Now, we told strings are immutable, so when I run this command, I should be able to say that it is not, it should not be successful and it should tell that it is an error. So, when you run that, you have a error. Now, look at that special type error, 
which says str object does not support item assignment. Now, it says that here it is a string operator. So, this concept is not applicable. What is that concept? Modification concept. Why it is not applicable? Because it is a string, it is a immutable in nature. Now, so here we told okay, in case you want to do some changes, you want to do some changes. So, in the case you have to create a new string. So, what we told fruit is a string, we called one uh, function called lower. So, we got an output where all these members are in the lower case where I am copying that to x. So, in the case we are creating a new string. What is my string name? x. We will print x and see yes, we have made the changes, we got it. But to get those changes, what did we do? We created a new string. Why? Because it is immutable. But what are lists? Lists are mutable. So, in the case without creating a new list, existing list content I can change, I should be able to change. That is what immutable is. So, we will take up an example. So, here we have set of numbers like 2, 14, 26, 41 and 63 which are enclosed in square bracket. So, it is a list, it is a list. Now, each member of the list is separated by comma that is also we have discussed. Then what is the name of the list? Loto, right. So, we will print Loto and we are able to see that the values are 2, 14, 26, 41, 63. Next, we will apply the mutable concept where we tell at index index 2. So, in that case we know this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, what am I doing? This value 26 I want to make it as 28. That is what our concept is. So, we have what we did we? How did we how do I access this index? Right. So, I will tell my group name which is my list name loto and within square bracket index is 2. So, I have read, we have the code here loto index 2 equal to 28. Now, as lists are mutable, this statement is accepted. Now, once it is accepted, we are trying to print, we will print loto. So, we will see that the values are 2 as it is, 14 as it is. Now, instead of 26, we have 28 here. So, the earlier value was 26. After we have changed to 28, we are able to see that there is a change in the value and rest 41 remains same, 63 remains same. So, here without creating a new list, existing list contents can be modified. Why? Because it is mutable in nature, but string we cannot, we cannot, but still we can achieve that. How? Creating a new string like this, right. So, existing uh, string content cannot be changed because they are immutable in nature. Okay. So, now uh, there are different facilities like example if it is a string, you have list of functions that are available where you can use the, all those functions. One of the example is what? Lower. Similarly, we do have lot of functions which we can apply for list, right. Now, one, how long is the list? It is nothing but what? Finding the length of the list, right. So, how do I find the length of a list? We do not know like what is the function name, but definitely we can guess what is that? recall what did we do at the string, what was the function that was available, maybe in C programming what was available, in C++ what was available. So, based on that we, we can guess like what the function name could be strlen, but that happens to be for a string, but in general if you look at the function name could be len, normally len. So, when you come down to python, yes you do have a function called len. So, if you look at that example, you have greet, hello, Bob, right. So, if this happens to be a list, then how do I identify that? This should be enclosed in square bracket, the first member, second member should be differentiated by a semicolon, sorry, by a comma, then we will be able to identify that there are two members, but this is a string. So, what it will give me? It will give me the length of the string, number of characters inside that string. So, you have uh, 5 here, 6th one is blank, another 3 is Bob, so totally 9, we got line using the function len. Now, similarly, we have a list by name x, by name x where the members are how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, but when you look at that, you have a combination of it, not all our numbers, all our strings as per our previous example, right? So, totally we have 4. So, when I print what is the length of this list, I have the value 4. So, how to find uh, how long is my list using a function len. So, how long indicates what? What is the length? How many members are there in the list, right? 
So, Elian function takes as a list as a parameter x right and result the number of elements in the list where in our example it is 4. So, uh, Elian is also used in terms of string also in terms of list. Now, okay. So, here uh, we do have some function called range, we do have uh, maybe uh, one, one function that we discussed is what alien. So, another function that we have is range right. Now, this range is a function which will return a list of numbers that ranges from 0 1 less than the parameter, 1 less than the parameter. So, if I tell okay. Uh, when we have something called as range, then we may have one start with and end with, start with and end with. Now, in range what we have? We have only one parameter, we have one parameter. So, it is starting from where? Starting from 0, starting from 0 and ending with parameter what? 1 less than the parameter. Like example, if my value is v, if my value is v, then it will start from 0, go till v minus 1 go till v minus 1 right. Now, example if I tell range 4, range 4 then in that case I will get all those numbers starting from 0 good starting from 0 going till the value v minus 1 where v is 4, 4 minus 1 3. So, I have 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now, so we will not look at this code, we will look at this code now. What are we doing? Print range. Okay, we are calling a function called range, but we are not passing a value. We are passing len function where the uh, list name is friends. So now we look at when I run length on friends, it'll okay. I have a data here: one, two, and three. So this value is three. So now range of three. So start from zero. Zero, one, two. Because three minus one, two. We'll stop here. Now this example will tell us what. One, I can use a range function to generate this list, right? Like a set of sequence numbers starting from zero to n minus one, but provided I have a value of n here, or I can also have an expression like this, where this again the output of the expression is nothing but my value. So here I can use functions to get this value. This is one example where need not be a number directly. We can call a function and where the function will return a value and that becomes a parameter to my range function. Right. Now, here uh, example of two loops. Right. Now, so when you look at this example, there are few things which we will try to discuss like um, the differences right? and try to figure out some changes in one loop, what is the other one. Right. Now, we have a list, we have a list where the list name is friends with these values. Then this is one for loop where we have for friends in friends then print okay, something a message with the value of the friend, a message with value of the friend. Next, we have another for loop where we have for i in range, in range friend equal to, uh, it is nothing but what? What are we doing? We are trying to access like what? Oh, members, members inside a list using the concept of array. So, now here we all know that friends, how do I access this? Square bracket with value index as 0 and how do I access this? 1, how do I access this? 2. So, in that case I, I should tell friends of 0 friends of 1, friends of 2, after 2 I have to stop. So, now when I have this, what is the length? Length is 3, length of this is 3. So, where do I stop? Length minus 1 because my index starts from 0, this index is 0. So, I will do 3 minus 1. So, when you look at that, I have a for loop where I will range from what? 0, 1 and 2 that is 3 minus 1, how did I get 3? I cannot fix up 3 directly here because Maybe sometime I may go back to my code, add an element here. So, th 3 will not work out. So, we will never use a constant like this. What I will do is I will call a function on friends and check with how many members are there. 
what is the function name l e n right. So, we have a function l e n. So, l e n 3 sorry l e n of friends will give me a value 3 here. So, when I use range of 3 ah, we know that start from 0 next is 1 next is 2 we will stop because it is 3 minus 1. So, now what I am accessing here friends of i first time i become 0 I have the first value next iteration I have second value next iteration I have a third value then I will print appropriate message. Now, go back what about this for loop right. So, this for loop does not uses the concept where I uh, as a programmer I will not treat them as what the members of an array trying to access using indexing no I use the concept of for in loop what is the best that is available with me in the python programming. So, I will tell for friends in friends that is nothing but a variable inside the group name I will print because I know that here I have the value first value as Joseph inside this, but when in, in our case I have a value 0 in our case. So, how using 0 indexing I will be able to use the concept of array what is the value that is stored at friends of index 0 that is Joseph I get a Joseph here, but the advantage of this is what the value what I am fetching is not an index it is directly the value here. So, in that case in my first instance friend the value is Joseph. So, it will print happy new year happy new year I get a value as Joseph right. So, we will go back here if I run them right what do I get. So, we, this is the code that I am trying to run here. So, I have a list with friends with three members inside that I will print trying to print how much is the length. So, there are three elements inside this then I use this concept where I am looking at the range here. So, I will tell a range of L e n of friends where I get 0, 1 and 2 that is what we wrote right 0, 1 and 2 right. Then when I run this program this is our output. Now, then what what is all this here right this is the one what we understood here we are trying to run that as a command and trying to check are we getting the same thing. So, this whole thing is our understanding like what we have we are trying to check whether it is right or wrong. Now, what did we get here this is the output of this program. So, either you take up this program or this program run them separately this is the output that I like. So, same output I am able to grab using either this for loop or this for loop. Now, as far as programmer is concerned which for loop do we prefer right. So, it does not matter whether I write the first one or second one we are able to get the same output, but what will be my choice my choice will be the first one right. So, wherein I need not think about it is an array follow the concept of indexing I need not worry that is what the advantage of for in. So, I take that concept where I use a for in advantage I try to write a code in this for loop or using the concept of this for loop. So, now as a student what you are supposed to do yeah best you should also prefer start using this for loop. Now, we should always look at a programming language has lot of facilities then I look at ok that is also there this is also there. Now, if how, how this is helping me right in what way it is helping me what is the best one we need to figure out and pick it up. But when you compare this for loop this is almost similar to our uh, for loop that we use in our C program, but we have a very good facility where we have this concept. So, please remember this is also for in kind this also is for in kind, but the difference we have here. So, here we are using the concept of index here we get the direct value of the list. So, this is the best for loop that we are supposed to figure out. Now, so when you have list uh, we discussed one uh, finding the members like l e n function then range with a value similarly we do have something called as a concatenation. Now, concatenation different programming languages have different facility like uh, it could be a dot as an operator it could be a plus as an operator or it could be a function as such right. In python it is plus operator it is a plus operator. So, plus operator can also be used for concatenation and it can be a list. So, plus is a binary operator what is on the left hand side what is on the right hand side can be a list. So, we can combine two list together right. So, 
we can create a new list by adding two existing list together right. So, now, now when you look at that we have a first list where we have a equal to 1, 2, 3 right. So, we have three members 1, 2 and 3 and what is the list name a indexes 0, 1 and 2. Second list we have b which is the members are 4, 5 and 6. Now, so we are able to create a new list by what by uh, by combining two lists together. So, in our case we are trying to create a new list called c where I am using the existing list where I am trying to add, but uh, is there anything like adding of two list? No, this is a concatenation. So, you are combining two lists together, right. So, what is my first list? 1, 2, 3. What is my second list? 4, 5, 6. When I combine, look at the answer. Print C, I get 1, 2, 3. First list, 4, 5, 6 is my second list, right. So, now when you come down here, what are we doing? We are trying to combine concat two list and getting a new list getting created. Then after I create, what happened to my old list? That does not change. So, look at that print A, A is still 1, 2 and 3. So, what is the change that we got? A new list got created after concatenation, right. So, we can combine uh, list using plus operator which is a concatenation. Ah, okay. So, normally any programming language we have something to uh, put them together, we will also have a function to eliminate that or break them, right. So, similarly we do have something called as a slice we do have a function not exactly the function name concept as slicing. Now, we will take an example. Now, we have a list with values like this 9, 41, 12, 3 and 74 and 15. Now, another point that I missed out all the members of the list should be in any order like ascending order or descending order or nothing. So, now ordering is not a mandatory. So, ordering can be anything. I, I as a list member I will do not look at the ordering at all. Right? Now, why? Because there is a combination, right. So, we may have a number, we may have a string and so on. So, any combination. So, ordering is not a ordering is not applicable to list. Okay. So, now what is my list name? T. T is our list name. Then what are our members? These are our members. Now, how did we identify it is a list? Yeah, square bracket and each member separated by comma. So, we know how many elements are there, how many members are there. Now, how to access 12? How to access 12? Yeah, we know right. What is the uh, list name? T, right. How do I access using square bracket? Using index. So, 0, 1, 2. So, if I write T of 2, then I am referring to 12. I am referring to 12. Now, what is slicing? I do not need one, I may need, I may have a, I, I need an access to more than one element, but not all together, not all together. So, where we have a concept like the list name t, list name t accessing element using square bracket, accessing an element using square bracket, but I do not want one, neither I want all, maybe I want some, right. So, in that case, we will have two things. 1 start with end. So, this happens to be start, this happens to be end. So, how do I differentiate them using a delimiter called colon. So, now if I have something like x y, so t of x colon y, t of x colon y, what that indicates? So, we are able to access the element with start with index x, go till y, but do we need to consider y? No, we should not consider y, right? No, we'll 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 uh, based on this concept, we'll take an example here. So now, what is our list name? T. So what did we write? T one is to three. So now, what is the meaning of this one is to three? Start one, start with index one, go till three. Should we consider three? No, skip that. So now, start with one. So it's nothing. In our case, what? This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is our index. So, for our first example, start with 1, go to 2, but do not go to 3 because why? Always 3 minus 1. So, in the case, what we have? Our output is 41, 12. So, look at that. When I tell t of 1 is to 3, I get output 41 and 12, 41 and 12, 
right. Now, another example we will take like this t of t of 0 is to 3 t of 0 is to 3. So, in the case what will be our output? This is n okay I, I will do one thing I will write an uh, a different understanding. So, what is the meaning of this? This is nothing but t of 0 t of 1 t of 2, but I do not get 2 of 3 because I, I have to skip 3. So, what is t of 0? 9 t of 1 41 t of 2 12. So, we will stop at 3 because the ending is 3, but we will not consider 3. Right? Now, what if we do not specify one of them or maybe both? So, we look into it. Now, I do not write anything here. I do not write anything here. So, look at this example t t within square bracket I do not have start with, but I have end with. So, in the case 4. So, my end index is 4. So, how do I start? Always start with first element which is nothing but 0. So, if anything missing start with first element index 0. So, what will be my output? t of 4, 4 is this one. So, in the case 9, 41, 12, 3, but not 74 because we will not we need, we need not consider or we should not consider index 4. So, look at the output will be what? 9, 41, 12, and 3. So, we will look into it. T of 4, 9, 41, 12, and 3. Yeah, perfect. Now, as we missed out first one, we will try to miss out the second one. We do not specify about the second one. So, we, if you take this example T of 3, colon nothing. So, in that case, you start from 3, but end with we are not specified. So, it will go till the last element, it will go till the last element. So, we will look into it. Start with 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So, it will go to 3. Okay. So, 3, 74, 15, 3, 74, 15, one confusion here started. What is it? Till now we told if I have x colon y, start with x, go till y, but do not take up y. That is what we did. Go back to the example. Start with 1, go till 3, but do not consider 3. Start with 1, 41, 12, do not consider 3, left out. 41, 12, 41, 12, perfect. But here, what are we doing here? We told start with 3, go till last. Start with 3, okay, 3, 3, 74, 15, 3, 74, 15. But last we should discard, no? But remember, here we have not specified anything. So, by default, we will take the complete list till the end. If we had specified this, we will not take up that. Right? Now, last option, what is that? We do not specify start, we do not specify end. So, in our case, if you look at here, we did not specify start. So, where to start? Index 0. We did not specify where to stop. What is it? It is the last element, till the last element. So, what will be our output? 9, 41, 12, 3, 74, 15. 9, 41, 12, 3, 74, 15. Yeah, perfect. Right? So, this is how we can have a slicing of a particular elements in the list. So, we have a list, we can break them into smaller pieces using the concept of slicing. But do we have a slicing in this string? Definitely yes. Right? So, what is the important point to be remembered here about the second argument? About the second argument about the second argument here. So, what is that second argument? It is always up to not including. So, in that case, if this index is second argument index is 6, go till 6, but do not include 6 in the output. So, in that case, we go till 5, we process everything, 6 is not included. right? So, keep this in the mind. Right? Either it will be the string for slicing or list of slicing, the concept remains same. Now, one thing that you need to remember is after you slice, what are the output that you get is also a list. Right? After slicing, the output that you get is also slicing. Okay. So, one common function which we have for multiple concepts in Python programming is a list method, is a list method. Right? Now, uh, how to create list? How to create list? Right? Now, if you go back here, how did we create? T is our list. How did we create? Use the square bracket, we gave a member. We do have another option. What? 
using a list method. So, I told x is a list, what are the members? There are no members at all, empty, empty list, it is an empty list, it is a empty list where we do not have any members inside the list. Right? Now, how do I make sure that x is list? Right? So, we can call something called as a type x which will tell me what is the type of x, it, it is giving me answer as what? List it is giving me the answer as list. Now, a special function we have which will tell us what are the available functions on a particular concept. Now, what is this x? x is nothing but a list, x is nothing but a list. So, now I can call a function called dir which will tell me like okay, these are the functions that are applicable for this parameter. What it says? These are the functions which are applicable for this parameter. What is my parameter? My parameter is list. So, these are the functions which are, I can perform on a list. So, append, count, extend, index, insert, pop, remove, reverse, sort. All these are functions which I can perform on x. What is x? x is nothing but a list. Right? So, dir can be used with arrays, dir can be used with files, dir can be used with dictionaries what they tell? They tell that what are the list of the valid functions that are applicable for particular parameter, for particular type. Okay. So, now what is the meaning of building a list from a scratch? So, in that case we treat like okay, initially list is empty, then later I want to add elements to the list. Yeah, definitely we can do that. How? We can create an empty list and then keep adding the elements whenever required. Right. Now, when you have an element 0 in nature which indicates that it is an empty list, it is an empty list. So, if it is an empty list, we do not have like indexing like index 0, index 1, index 2, these are the elements, they are not available. So, we cannot modify, we cannot modify. So, this concept is gone. Why? Because it is an empty list, it is an empty list. So, when you have an empty list, you do not have an indexing. When you add an element to that, yeah, index is available. So, now how to add element? How to add an element using the concept called append, right? So, append is one function. So, we will go back here. Append is a function, right? Now, how did we create a list? Variable equal to the function list, method list, where parameters are. A, a, this is nothing but a function, right? A method. So, if you go back here. How do I create an empty list and how do I make sure that I keep adding the elements later? Yeah, this is the concept, right? Stuff equal to, stuff is nothing but our uh, list name equal to list. So, in that case, stuff became a list with no members. It is an empty list. Then we will add stuff dot append book. So, book got added to the stuff list. Then we have stuff append 99, 99 got added to this list. Then we will print stuff. So, we should get book comma 99. Yeah, we have book comma 99 enclosed in square bracket. Why? Because it is a list. Right? So, we got this. Next, again after this we have printed, we are trying to again append with cookie. Again with cookie. So, in that case, this also gets appended to the stuff. So, when I print stuff, we should be able to see 99, sorry, book 99 and cookie. So, you see the output book 99 cookie. Right? So, we have what we have come across one a list can be created with a specific values already known to us second a empty list can be added sorry empty list can be created and how do we add using a method called append right. So, we can keep updating our list. Okay. So, the list very important is this the list that we are creating are in order new elements always end of the list. Why? Because we are using append. Append is a function what it does? Takes the element always adds the end of the list. That is the reason why after book we are able to print 99, after 99 when I add cookie we are able to see cookie. So, why? Because it is adding at the end of the list. So, if I have one more append x, y, z that will come down here. right? Okay. So, we discussed about uh, many functions, maybe we will also look into function like I have a list, do I have an element inside that list? I want to check whether my element is inside the list for which we have a operator called in. 
right. So, now look at that this is a list where I have elements like 1, 9, 21, 10, 16 then what is the name of the list sum S Y M E sum then I want to check ok e is a number that I am referring like example 9 is inside this list. So, I will say 9 in sum it is available. So, answer is true. I want to check 15 in our example is 15 available in this list 15 in sum not available the answer is false right. Now, 20 but why did we get true right 20 why did we get true right. So, keep thinking we will come back continue this in the next session.